Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Magic Fusion by GSDSP. I'm looking at the iOS version, but uh, it's identical to the desktop version. And I've got five copies, sorry, three copies of any GSDSP app to give away to subscribers to the channel. Details of how to win are in the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comment section. Yesterday, by the way, I made a one hour walkthrough on Beat Scholar and the giveaway for that is still open as well. So uh, go and check that out, at least at the time of making this video, it's still open. Okay, so first of all, uh, what are we going to go through in this video? First, I'll just talk a little bit about what uh, Magic Fusion is, what it does. Um, we'll listen to a few examples. Uh, we'll look at how to set it up, because it's very important that you know how to set this up, otherwise it's not going to do anything interesting. Um, and then we'll come back and look a bit more closely at uh, some of the controls. Now, I did a detailed video on Magic Delay by the same developer. Now, all this developer's apps, at least so far, if you get familiar with one, you can basically understand all of them. So, uh, I went into a lot of detail in my Magic Delay video about things like um, the curve editor and the curves themselves and the modulation system and so on. So if you want to learn about that, go and watch my video on Magic Delay. I'll put a link um, maybe above, uh, maybe in the pinned comment. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to repeat all the same stuff in this video. Okay. Um, so what is Magic Fusion, first of all? Well, basically it is what we could call a spectral vocoder. Um, now what is unique about it is that, because for example, it's not really the first spectral vocoder. Um, for example, Apesoft Sparkle does that, but this does things that Apesoft Sparkle doesn't. So uh, these curves here, basically what they are, what they're doing is um, applying the effect uh, to various degrees of strength to different uh, sections of the frequency spectrum, i.e. the note spectrum of what we're inputting. Um, and yeah, we have these great, great built-in uh, modulation options, also randomization options and so on. It's a, it's a very powerful and nice sounding tool. So first, let's just have a little listen to what it can sound like. So first, I'll let you hear um, like with any vocoder, we basically have a carrier and a modulator. So here I'm using Decent Sampler, a Venus Theory sound pack called Volitions, using something in that for the modulator, sorry, the carrier. So that's really the main thing that is um, bringing the sound. And then for the modulator, <clears throat> I'm using Zenematics by Versen, a uh, staccato choir from the Zenematics choir pack. And that's what that sounds like. And uh, I'm using Chord Jam, by the way, to uh, play both of those. And you may have noticed Chord Jam had an update recently, um, bringing in an MP band capability. And uh, if you listen to that decent sampler, you can hear the way that's bending there between chords and that's using that's using MP3, sorry, MPE to do that. It's really cool. Uh, so now let's um, listen to uh, an example of this Zenematics choir over here that we just listened to, modulating this. Now you don't need to set it up with a sand bus and stuff like that, it's just the way I've done it. Um, you could easily just set this up and put this uh, magic, um, what the hell is it called again? Magic Fusion. Put Magic Fusion just directly in here. And you could just use this FX knob as a dry wet. Here it's fully wet. And here it's fully dry. So that setup's a bit unnecessary, actually. Um, 
So let's uh, let's talk about what's going on here, and we maybe just go through a few more presets first. Now, of course, um, we don't have to keep the volume down on this. We can keep it in so we have both. And then we can bring in a bit of dry signal off the carrier if we want. Okay, but for now I'm going to keep that modulator down. Here the LFO is playing with these curves. This one. See how it changes as I change the speed. And we can also just uh, do it in hertz rather than synced. So let me pause this for a second and go over some things in the interface. Like I said, I'm not going to go into detail. But if we uh, go to the default preset. Now, um, we've got no modulation or anything going on here, so it's not all that interesting. But just to point out, if I try and drag this, it won't drag. I need to choose a curve first and then drag it. So this is basically completely dry and this is uh, completely wet. And so let's say here I click and uh, I drag this down. So now we can basically do a kind of sweep. And so here, the way this is at the moment, um, basically no notes below A sharp 3 are being effect affected, right? And then up here, basically everything will be being affected. Or sorry, nothing will be being affected, yeah. And here everything's being affected. Now uh, we can use this to invert this. Now here we can uh, play with the stereo. And so here we can shift it left and right. And here we can skew it. You see that getting narrower and wider. And again, playing with the stereo. Now, then we can um, put on an LFO. So let's just go to a preset. And if we click here, well, we can see that this LFO is modulating the X axis of the XY pad, which basically controls uh, which curves are dominant at any time. And if I click here, we can see uh, this LFO is modulating this, the shift, okay, and we can see that modulation happening there. Okay, um, so here, uh, basically, we're choosing between unipolar and bipolar. Uh, here, we can turn on sample and hold for uh, this particular LFO. Um, here we have a global sample and hold, by the way. Right, so you see how that's frozen that? But it hasn't frozen everything. But this will freeze everything. Um, and we can turn an LFO on and off here. 
Now again, I went into all this in my last video. There's a lot of different um, modulation types. So uh, yeah, go and watch that other video if you want to learn about those. Um, also, when you choose something over here, you'll you'll also get some options sometimes. Uh, yeah, for example, if you pick a random LFO, uh, you'll be able to choose whether it's uh, stepped or whether it's um, smoother and so on. Okay, uh, so again, won't go into all that stuff because that's the same. By the way, um, GSDSP also have a free app called MMM, which basically has this uh, modulation system uh, as an AUV3. Brilliant. Now, um, let's just listen again to something really cool here. So here we can basically reverse uh, what is the carrier and what is the modulator. So okay, here, uh, that decent sampler, the Venus Theory Pack, that is the carrier. But now it has become the modulator and you hear now the choir coming into predominance. That can be pretty interesting. Bit of a DSP spike there. Um, yeah, I, I guess this is also quite heavy on DSP, and I have uh, some things like Fab Filter. This Clave Grand uh, Grand Finale. Uh, actually, hang on, I got two bloody instances of that there. This one's not active though. Um, yeah, so uh, there's actually quite a lot um, going on here. I should probably just get rid of these Beat Scholars as well. Now, um, it's very important, as I said at the beginning, to understand how to set this up. So, um, what we do is take the instrument that you want to be the uh, carrier, okay? And let's let's just take that away. Okay, and you see this one disappeared. So we go in here, click Audio Unit Extension. Click Magic Fusion. Okay, and then we go over to the modulator, we click and choose multibus audio unit instances. And then here I choose magic fusion. And so now that has set that up so that uh, when it's like this, as we discussed earlier, then this is the carrier. And this one over here is for the modulator. Okay, so very important. <clears throat> to do that. Now, uh, I'll put links um, because some of the LFOs, uh, you can use some um, side chaining and stuff like that. Uh, I'll put links, for, like for example, GSDSP did a video on uh, using, uh, using this in Logic, so how to side chain it in Logic. I think that would be useful for people. I think they also did a video on how to do it in, in AUM, uh, but you've already basically learned that. Um, okay, so um, I don't think there's anything else that I really want to cover here. Um, as I said at the start, I'll make this a very short video. And if you want to learn more about all the stuff like how the XY pad works and so on, then um, go and check that out. But just to mention that you don't have to use vocals. So like that's why I had, um, for example, that Beat Scholar there. So let me just take that away a second and let me load Beat Scholar. And uh, okay, let's again Multibus Magic Fusion. Right, so now we're using these drums basically to gate things. Yeah, really, wow, this is cranking the DSP hard. 
As I say, though, I do have some really heavy-duty plugins going on in this session. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, do please give it a thumbs up and so on. Uh, write a comment or whatever if you did. Uh, enter the giveaway if you're on time. Don't forget that my giveaway for Beat Scholar is also still open. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.